بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم ما بعد فقد قال تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سورة النساء بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الرجال قوامون على النساء بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض وبما أنفقوا من أموالهم إلى آخر الآية صدق الله مولانا العظيم ومن أصدق من الله قيل رب اشرح لي صدري وسلي أمري وحل العبدة من لساني يفقه قولي The goal, the aims and objectives and rights and responsibilities have been covered in the series of marriage in Islam. There are three areas to consider in marriage. They are governance, the social life, and finances. Today's sermon is about governance. In some cultures, Muslim cultures, women who are from a well-to-do family usually is the one that make decisions even though the husband is the one who works and brings the money. In other words, the wife is the boss. Whereas in the same cultures, you find women who are from middle class to a lower class, you find the husband to be in charge, dictating to the woman, to the wife, and treating her like a maid or a servant, as opposed to a partner in this marriage. They are treated like slaves. They are abused and bossed around by the husband. Now, what does Islam say about this? Who governs? Who sets the rules? And who decides? Who makes decisions? First, let us understand uh, one thing before we move on. That in Islam, marriage is considered to be an institution. Marriage is an institution. And what does that mean? When we talk about an institution, it means that there are rules of conduct, who does what, when, and how, and so on and so forth. For generations and for centuries, traditionally and culturally, all across the globe, all across all traditions and faith traditions, the mother, the father, the children, and grandparents passed on what the role of each is in the institution. For generations, mothers were homemakers. They took care of the internal management of the household while fathers were the breadwinners. They are responsible to work and bring money to the house, to the family, so that they have the required resources to survive and meet their needs. The question is, who heads that institution, that family, and who is responsible for making decisions? Now, as we know, in any institution, there can only be one head. You cannot have two heads to any institution. For example, you can have only one president in a given country. You cannot have two presidents. You can have only one principal in a school. You cannot have two principals. You may have many vice principals or many vice presidents, but only one heads the institution. So like other institutions, in the institution of marriage, one has to lead. Is it the husband or is it the wife? And according to the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave that responsibility to the man. لقوله جل وعلا الرجال قوامون على النساء بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض. Men are the قوامون على النساء. They are the ones who are in charge over women. 
something that God has given to some over others. So in this ayah, الرجال قوامون على النساء بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض. So two terms or key words mentioned in the ayah: the قوامون and فضل. الرجال قوامون على النساء. Men are the قوامون over women. قوامون plural of قوام. What does قوام mean? Qawwam is an intensive form of qa'im and has a sense of continuity in the action involved. Therefore, it means one who is continuously standing over something or one who is continuously making something stand. That is to say, maintaining it. Allama Muhammad Asad writes regarding this term, the expression qawam is an intensive form of qa'im. One who is responsible for or takes care of a thing or a person. Thus, qama ala al-imra'a signifies he undertook the maintenance of the woman or he maintained her. So men shall take full charge or full care of women. Qama ala qawwamuna, arrijalu qawwamuna ala nisa. The usage of preposition is very important. It gives one a sense of meaning that may differ if a different preposition is used with the same word. Qama ila, he stood up to go towards something. Qa'iman bi, qa'iman bil qist. Standing up for justice. Al Qawwamuna ala. This preposition ala. So Qama ala is to guard something, to control something, to rule over something. And Sayyid Qutb, Rahimahullah, in his Fidulal al Quran, in his interpretation of the Quran, he interpreted this ayah to mean, or this part of the ayah to mean, Men shall take full care of women. He emphasizes that this ayah deals with the institution of family, its management, delegation of responsibilities, and defining duties. It gives instructions for the strength, stability, and protection from internal conflicts. Hence, man is the manager he is the protector, the maintainer of the family. He is the head of the family. And you may say he is the one to rule over the family. Generally speaking, he is the head of the household. But of course, there can be exception to the rule. The general rule is, الرجال قوامون على النساء. Men are entrusted with the duty of being responsible for women. They are to ensure that they are taken care of to guide them and instruct them by that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down. Men in the family play the role of a president who is responsible for the people whom he represents and are under his care. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Surah Al-Baqarah in this regard, وَلِلْرِجَالِ عَلَيْهِنَّ دَرَجَةٌ وَاللَّهُ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ But men have a degree of responsibility over them, over women. And Allah is Aziz, He is Almighty, He is All-Wise. So God gave this responsibility to men for two reasons. What are those two reasons? Tafdeel and infaq. الرِّجَالُ قَوَّمُونَ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ Number one, bima faddal Allahu ba'dahum ala ba'd wa bima anfaqu. So for two reasons. The first reason is the tafdil. Fadl. Allah made some excel over the other in some respects. That's the general rule. So fadl, what is fadl? Fadl is a bounty. Something that is extra. For example, if you have a worker and you have given the worker his or her wage, 
whatever it is, say $100, and you are so impressed by his work, you gave him additional $20. The first $100 is his right. This other $20 is fuddle from you, is extra. This is fuddle. The root of the concept fuddle in Arabic means to give more. Lexically, fuddle is ziyada, more. Since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put men in charge does not make them superior over women. He is in charge of the management of the family. On the other hand, they both share same equal rights in terms of their human worth and dignity and so on and so forth. However, when it comes in an institution setting and the management of that institution, then you may say that the employer may not be equal to the employee. They are not equal. A teacher is not equal to the student and so on and so forth. So although they share the equality in human dignity and worth, but in management, they are not equal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us in so many places in the Quran regarding the shared equality among human beings at the levels of morality and at the level of spirituality. But as husbands and wives, in terms of the management of the family, they are not equal. Men are the managers, they are the custodians, protectors, guardians, and rulers over women. So since men are considered to be the head of the household and have the upper hand, it does not mean, please understand this point, it does not mean that God has given a higher status to men. It does not mean that men are superior to women. It does not mean that men become dictators in the family. On the other hand, it's a tremendous responsibility born on the shoulder of men. And they will be held accountable on the day of judgment for that. So the position God gave men does not make one superior over women. Again, there is no inferiority, no superiority at the spiritual level. And again, I just want to emphasize how important it is to not undermine the equality of uh, women to men. You know, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in Surah Al-Ahzab, equating men and women in so many different ways. Inna al-Muslimina wal-Muslimat, wal-Mu'minina wal-Mu'minat, wal-Qanitina wal-Qanitat, and so on and so forth. The believing men and the believing women. The Muslim men and the Muslim women. The devout men and devout women, and so on and so forth. So that tells us that it, it's possible that women could be superior to you in terms of her connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's not about superiority or inferiority. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all humans equal. Surah Al-Hujurat. Ya ayu al-nasu anna khalaqnakum min dhakaran wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu. We created you from a single male and a single female. Adam and Hawa were all equal in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to the spiritual and moral levels. But as husbands and wives, they are not equal. So, بِمَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بَعْضَهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ Men have charge of women because of this uh, tafdeel. Another way to understand the ayah is because Allah has given some more than others. So, this responsibility Allah gave it to men. Yusuf Ali, for example, regarding بِمَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بَعْضَهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ says because God has given to one more strength than the other. So what? that's one interpretation. Piktal has a different interpretation. Because God made the one of them to excel the other. And you find many different interpretations regarding this, but we know that it was Allah's decision to make the man go out and hunt and work and bring to the family the, you know, 
food so that they can survive and meet their needs. So regardless, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who made that decision. Now the other reason for that is infaq. وَبِمَا أَنْفَقُوا مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ And because they spend out of their own means. So men, again, they are the hunters. They are the main breadwinners of the family. The wife does not have to work. She is, so to say, the queen of the house. The basic rights of the wife, to be fed, clothed, and to be treated kindly. So though she may work and help the husband, but it is solely the responsibility of man to spend on the woman and the family. So by virtue of tafdeel, and also because they spend out of their means, they become the head of the family. Because they financially support them out of their wealth. So it is the responsibility of the husband to spend and care for his wife. She does not have to work to support herself if the husband is able to work. Now, of course, there can be exception to the qawama, although the general rule is that men are the ones responsible, but there could be situations where the man has become incapacitated or unable to work and provide, in which case it's okay for the wife or the children to work. And in this case, the qawama will be transferred to those who are providing. So it can be a situation where the woman is the qawama as opposed to the man. So there can be exception. If the man is unable to manage, then the woman has to take the responsibility. The wife may play that role and become the head of the household. But in general, it is the man who is managing the affairs of the family. So I just want to shed some light on this tremendous responsibility. It is the head of the household, regardless, who will be responsible, who is responsible, and who will be accountable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we men rejoice, take pride. Oh, I'm the man of the house. I'm the boss. I'm the one who will tell you what to do and what not to do. But wallahi, if you just ponder upon this for a moment, it is the man who will be held responsible and be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to explain everything that went wrong in that marriage. Then what you're going to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Wallahi, if you know how huge that burden on the shoulders of men, you would wish that you were created a woman. Honestly, this is not a joke. Therefore, it is the head of the household that carries a huge burden on his shoulder. Men have their role and responsibilities, and women have their own roles and responsibilities. All of you are shepherds. Each one has his or her own responsibilities to care for. In the Islamic marriage, that's another point that is very important. Alhamdulillah, we're Muslims. In the Islamic marriage, not civil marriage, I'm talking about Islamic marriage, the divine law must be observed and implemented. And it is the responsibility of the man who is in charge to make sure that this is implemented. Otherwise, you are responsible. You are held accountable. It is the imam and the amir of the family who will be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The responsibility that comes with that authority is huge. So don't rejoice. Think again. Just because the helm of affairs is entrusted to the man, he is, should be the amir of the family, not the amir of the family. You know the difference between the amir and the amir. The amir has the authority to give commands, whereas the amir is the one who dictates and says, you got to do this. 
No, you got to be the Amir. How does an Amir carry out his responsibilities? Remember that she is your wife and she is your partner and committed helper. She is your other half. And Nisa'u Shaqa'iqur Rijal. They are the other halves of men. So they are equal in sharing the responsibility of raising a family. Now, what is the method? What is the method and the procedure for making decisions? That's very important. As an Amir who has the authority, I will not make my decision based on my own, you know, will. An Amr may do that. But as an Amir, I will consult my wife and I will consult my family. Because this is the method, the procedure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduced to us in the Quran in running the affairs of any institution or community for that matter. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? وَأَمْرُهُمْ شُورَ بَيْنَهُمْ How do you conduct the affairs of the community? How did the Prophet conduct the affairs of the community? Although, keep in mind, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a prophet of Allah. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا لِيُطَاعَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ We've never sent a messenger except to be obeyed by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had to be obeyed regardless. Whatever he says will have to go. But then Allah is teaching the believers because after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is we, it is the Muslims who will be running the affairs of the community. How do we run that? And marriage is an institution within this larger community. How do, you, how do we run the affairs? وَأَمْرُهُمْ شُورَ بَيْنَهُمْ Their matters are handled in mutual consultation. O oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, consult them in all matters. He doesn't have to consult anybody. But to show us, to teach us how to make decisions. So whether you run a company, or whether you are in charge of your family, shawurhum fil amr, consult them in the affairs. فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Now, once you have consulted everybody, you took the data, collected the data, and always follow the prophetic guidance, and that is always go with the majority. As long as there is no haram in whatever being suggested or the decision you are about to take. Because لا طاعة لمخلوق في معصية الخالق There can be no obedience to anyone that results in disobedience. So within the circle of mubah and jaiz and permissible, okay, look at your wife, your children, ask them, about whatever you want to do, be it small or big, and then go with the majority. There is nothing wrong with that. Even though it will have to go against your own self. Because we have an incident where the Prophet ﷺ wanted to fight the Mushrikeen after the Battle of Badr. He consulted his companions, particularly the youth. And he said, what should we do? We have two options. We can either fight them in al Madina, or we can go out and fight them outside. The majority opted to go out and fight the mushrikeen outside of al Madina. although he, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wanted to fight them inside of al Madina. He's the Prophet of Allah. He could have said, no, excuse me, we're going to fight them here. All would have responded. But no, to teach us a lesson, to teach us the, the, the importance of shura. He said, we're going to go out. Later on, the Sahaba told them, we'll take our opinion back, basically. We didn't know that you want to fight them inside of al Madina. What was the response of the Prophet ﷺ? He said, it does not behoove. A prophet who once puts the armor on to take it off. We're going out. 
فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Once you make a decision, put your trust on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if the consequences are not to your favor. And we know what happened in the battle of Badr. The Prophet got injured big time and rumors had it that he was killed. Yet, he, st he stood by his decision that was based on the majority. There is nothing wrong with that. In the same way, you can apply that at home. You collect the data, you offer your own opinion, your own suggestion, and now, yes, the decision is yours. So everyone in the household has a say. Everyone can contribute. Each member of the family has something to share and contribute. And then you make the decision. So you handle the affairs of the family in a consultative way. And you know what? Sometimes we really underestimate the intelligence of uh, women, our spouses, and women in general. You know, we have this stigma. I don't know what it is. But let us learn from, you know, again, uh, the Prophet wasallam. how important it is to always involve your wife in whatever you're going through, in your decision making, seeking an advice. Don't think that your wife is incapable to give you a golden advice like Umm Salama gave the Prophet ﷺ. While the Prophet and the companions set out to go for Umrah, the Prophet had a dream. We're going for Umrah. He gathered all the Sahaba, let's go for Umrah. And the dream of a Prophet is Wahi, is Wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they gathered themselves and they set out to go to Mecca. Outside of Mecca, they met some emissary from the polytheists who knew that they were going there to perform pilgrimage, Umrah. So they stopped them and negotiated. The Prophet agreed that this year we will not perform Umrah, but we will come next year and perform the Umrah. Among other things, this is called the Treaty of Hudaybiyah or Hudaybiyah. You're familiar with it. And in that treaty, you find the terms are more favorable to the polytheists than to the believers. So the Prophet informed the Sahaba, he said, listen, we're not going to perform Umrah this year, we're going to head back, and inshallah next year we'll come back and we will perform the Umrah. So take off your ihram garments, shave your heads and slaughter your animals. A command. The Prophet of Allah is commanding. No one, not a single companion, including Abu Bakr and Umar, radiallahu anhuma, responded to the Prophet. They were so mad. It's like, how come? You are the Prophet of Allah. How come we're not performing Umrah? Why are we yielding to the polytheists? He didn't know what to do. He went into his tent. Umm Salama was with him. Radiallahu anha wa ardaha. He complained to her. He says, I don't know what's wrong with my companions. I told them one, two, three, but nobody responded. I don't know what to do. She said, don't worry about it. You go out yourself in front of them. You shave your head. And then, you know, you change your clothes, you slaughter your animals, and inshallah, they will follow suit. They will follow you, one after another. What a golden advice. He did that. He did that. He did not doubt the intelligence of Umm Salama. She was an Aisha, the smart wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most intelligent of not only all the wives, of all people for that matter. That was Umm Salama. 
very humble wife. And sure enough, he went out, he did exactly what his wife told him, and everybody, one after another, did exactly what he wanted them to do. The power of shura, the power of consultation, it works. The discipline of obedience, once a command is issued, it has to be there. We have to listen and obey, even though the decision was against my opinion. It matters not because what matters here is unity. Unity in the family, unity in the community. That's what matters. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will most certainly put barakah in whatever endeavor or whatever decision you have made regarding whatever matter you are going through. Men are in charge, but they are not dictators. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our wives and our men and our children. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put that love and affection in our hearts so we can inshallah ta'ala live a good life, married life, and show the world how you maintain a good family based on Islamic teachings. Inshallah ta'ala, Allahumma ameen. Wa sallillahumma ala khayri khalqik Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.